Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Main Assembly. And today I am looking into the 1.0 launch of Main Assembly, which comes out the day that this video is uploaded, actually. And this introduces some new parts, some new uh, weapons, and a whole new sandbox map and challenge map called the Final Frontier, which is space. Zero G vacuum space which is going to add for a whole nother level of difficulty and no doubt some frustration when it comes to building and balancing creations and vehicles. So before we get into the actual map here, let's actually look at the patch notes and see what is new. What, what can we expect? So this is the actual launch. We are now out of early access for main assembly and we have some new space challenges and a sandbox, which I already said. We have a rocket engine, which is what you need to fly through space. We have laser and plasma weapons, explosives, decal support on bots, a server browser for multiplayer, and I guess a lot of other bug fixes and tweaks. So I am going to be diving into these challenges, but first let's go into sandbox mode just so we can play with these parts. This is the final frontier. This is it. This is the big addition into main assembly. So this is actually really beautiful, isn't it? Oh, man. oh, this thing's a lot bigger than I thought it was. Holy cow. All right, so I did do a little bit of testing before the recording just to make sure that uh, my version worked here. And there is legitimately a vacuum of space here. Aerodynamic pieces are pretty much useless. They will not catch any air because we are in a vacuum. So here, I'll just spawn in my car from the break it challenges. And uh, you can see we're actually in zero G here. You can see the effects of swinging my hammer, even my saw blades. <laughs> they have a gyroscopic effect on me in space. So this is legitimately, like, this is zero G, guys. We have it. We have zero G. Look at this. Look at all. This is going to be so difficult. Like, I don't know if you guys understand how difficult it's going to be to balance a creation, especially without aerodynamics. But uh, here, I actually, I have a plane. Let's spawn in a plane and see how it functions. I got my cyber plane here. Let's just load this in. And I can't move. Jet engines do not work in the vacuum of space. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, what caused me to move this? Oh, my wheels. Yeah, that's right. I forgot that I actually had my wheels attached. So I'm also getting gyroscopic forces from my wheels like this. Okay, so now let's look into the parts so we can play around with uh, actually making this thing become a spaceship, I suppose. The jet engine does not work in space. I'm, I don't know if the booster does, but this one says a rocket engine that works both in atmosphere and a vacuum. I wonder if RCS thrusters work. Let me just test it really quick. All right, good news. Good news, RCS thrusters work. That's gonna make some controls. Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> All right, that's gonna make uh, controlling things a little bit better, having more than one option for powered thrust here. All right, so we need to replace this with the new rocket engine. And it looks like the rocket engine attaches like on the end. So I'm gonna have to build something to attach it to. All right, rocket engine is installed. It is hooked up to space. You know, let's just put the power up to 100. Why not max everything out? And here we go. Okay. So clearly we're not balanced. Let's take a look at how the balance is. Fortunately, this game gives us center of thrust and center of mass. So the reason why we front flip is because you can see our center of thrust is clearly above our center of mass. So we need to raise the center of mass. So let's go ahead and add some weights. Let's see how easy it's going to be to balance this thing out. I'm just going to add some weights at the top. All right, how's that look? That looks pretty aligned, right? Center of mass, center of thrust. Let's see how it impacts us. And please go straight. All right, now we're back flipping. So you can clearly see it's a very, very fine-tuned process of balancing a spacecraft. And tail fins are not going to have any impact on your directional stability, unlike in an atmosphere. Let's not spend too much time on that. Let's get on to what we really want to see here. We want to see the weapons, right? All right, plasma cannons are hooked up. Ooh. Oh, they have recoil, too. Look at this. That's so cool. All right, so this is definitely going to add another layer of uh, intricacy to building a combat spacecraft because these things have recoil. All right, let's try the lasers. All right, so this is actually really interesting. The laser gives us three options here. We can have fire, which obviously fires it. We can also have charge, which is a feat. It's an output. This will give the current weapon charge into whatever you want. And then also hit provides feedback when the weapon hits something. So you can actually have some condition when you hit something for something else to happen. So that's interesting. I wonder what people are going to do with that. All right. So this is what a laser looks like. 
So I wonder what charge means. And then I'm just gonna hook that into debug. We'll give it a percent symbol. All right, so now we have 100%. Look at that. There we go, now we actually have a charge. And so at 50%, you can start firing again. Yep, that's awesome. That's really, really cool. I love the lasers and there's no recoil on the lasers. So that's pretty cool too. Oh, interesting. So this is interesting. You can maybe set them, you can program them to like throttle in a way that they shoot rapid fire without actually losing charge over time. Look at that. All right, so now we also have explosions uh, or explosives. We have three different kinds of explosives. Uh, all explosives do the same amount of damage according to the description. So they're just different shapes. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put explosives all over this. We got that kind of explosive. We got this kind of explosive. We got that, I guess you could have like torpedoes. All right, well, I'm just gonna hook up all the explosives into one button and we're just gonna explode my plane here. I don't know if it's gonna destroy us or not. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Oh, we survived a lot more than I thought we were going to survive. Our tail's gone, but the rest of us is still there. All right, let's, I wanna zoom out, get a look at that from a better distance. Oh, wow. That time we lost a wing, that was really cool. All right, well, this just adds a whole lot of possibilities for creation. So now that I think I've got a general gist of what's new, let's hop into the challenges and see if we can put this uh, amazing knowledge to good use. All right, so we're doing exploration in zero G. We have to fly through all checkpoints. Oh, great. We're just gonna have to start off right off building with something that can fly through space. Collect a star, complete the chain link and plasma. Just, just plasma. All right, let's get to it. Space. Neither frontier nor final, yet escaping their gravity well took humans an excessively long time. We theorized that they are allergic to hard vacuum, and so for a while the vastness of space was a playground almost exclusive to artificial sentience. We had so many wild parties. Your first task is to learn how to navigate out here. We wouldn't want a repeat of the accidental Voyager event. Okay. Well, that doesn't give me a whole, oh, here we go. Here we go, this gives me something. Uh, center of thrust, center of ma- Yeah, I tried that. I tr you saw, you all saw, I tried that. It didn't work that well for, or I guess maybe I'm supposed to have it a decent amount in front. The center of mass should be in front of my center of thrust. Yeah, and RCS thrusters, okay. Well, I guess I'm just gonna follow what it says here. We're gonna use this to go, and we're gonna probably use our RCS thrusters for control. So let's try to build ourselves a rocket ship.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got first prototype of my spacecraft here, and it is not balanced yet. For instance, if I press space, you can see I definitely want a front flip, but um, I have a single RCS thruster, and I just wanted to see if it even is functional the way I hooked it up. All right, so I have a single RCS thruster up on the nose, so you can see I'm going to press Q and E for yaw, and that's reversed, but it actually, it does work, so that's kind of cool. W and S should be pitch so there we go we can correct pitch like that so now we need some roll on this thing so i think i should be able to stick something like in here on the wings the, the wings <laughs> but here we go so as long as the arrow is in the direction that your spacecraft is facing then that should you should just be able to program it the way that uh the labeling says so for rcs thruster 2 i want this to be my roll so I'm actually gonna have, I'm gonna get rid of the roll on that front one because the nose one doesn't make any sense to have roll. So there we go, we got roll there. I need to reverse these. So now let's see, I'm gonna roll left. Oh, nope, that's reversed. So I'll go ahead and reverse these, A and D. All right, so now we roll left and we roll right. We pitch down, we pitch up, we yaw left and we yaw right. There we go. And then we got our thrust as well. And I just need to balance out the weight and we should have a hopefully, oh wait, I don't have, Break. Hold on, how do I how do I program in a break? Counter velocity? Activates thrust to stop all linear movement. Alright, that sounds good. So now if we're going forward and I want to break, we just go oh. <laughs> That's one way to break. Okay, so now what I wanted to test was braking. So if I go forward and then I press left shift to break. That didn't work. Why didn't that work? Counter velocity did not work for these. You know, I think I need separate RCS thrusters just particularly for counter velocity, and I'm gonna put those ones in here on a flat surface. That might be the way to do it. You know, we have counter velocity, counter spin, fixes all yaw rotation and fix rotation, reset pitch and roll back to zero. What if I have all of this into break, so it just literally stops me still? I don't know. Let's try it. All right, let's see if that helps. That actually does help. So now if I'm spinning like this and I press shift, it's trying. It's not doing very good. No, it did it. It did it. Look at that. All right, so now let's try the yaw control. So I'm going to go into yaw and I press shift. That one worked a lot better. And now what about, whoops, whoops. All right, hold on, what if I pitch and press shift? Look at that, that's so cool. <gasps> I, I actually think I kind of built a working spacecraft. The only issue right now is center of thrust versus center of mass, let's fix it. All right, I think I've done it. So if I press space, you can see I go relatively straight. This is really difficult, guys. This is like so hard to control. Oh, and I missed the checkpoint and now I'm getting out of control trying to correct myself. All right, hold on, activate brakes. Activate brakes. Activate all the control. All right, there we go. <laughs> Let's see if we can actually fly through all the checkpoints now. It is so easy to just get off axis. If you're not just doing every, like you really need to program some automatic stabilization and I have not done that. Everything is manually controlled, which makes this really difficult. All right, hold on. All right, fix myself. All right, my braking button though is like a lifesaver. I'll tell you that right now. All right, here we go. Through the checkpoint. Oh my goodness, look at how difficult it is for you just to fly straight. Aerodynamics makes this so much easier. If I was able to just put a tail on this thing and have wind resistance to keep my nose forward. All right, there's that. Oh my goodness. Okay, all right, all right, this is fine. This is fine. All right, let's break. Let's, oh man, what is the break doing? I feel, is it trying to reset me back to a default like position? I, I just wanted it to kind of stop me in the direction that I'm facing but I don't know if it's trying to reset me to like, I don't know. I don't know where default position would be. I guess whatever my starting position was. All right, all right, come on, come on. In, in here, in here, there Parking we go. Area Parking area enabled, all right. All right, now we just gotta get up to this one. Oh boy, okay, we're, we're almost there, we're almost there. All right, wait, break, 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 break. Wait, four out of nine and it's like inside already? Is there more stuff inside here? Okay, here we go. Is this 
fine. We're doing it. We're doing it. Oh my goodness. There's like a there's like an elevator shaft and everything. Okay, my breaking. Maybe I shouldn't have had the yaw and stuff. I don't know. I feel like I need different types of breaks because sometimes I want to keep facing in one direction, but then my yaw breaking or my yaw control. Oops. My yaw control also messes me up. Oh no, this is bad. All right, no, we're fine now. Okay. Okay, no, no, stop again, stop again. <laughs> I'm just trying to face straight. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Zerji is so difficult. And going forward. All right, all right, I got this. All right, this is fine. The thing is, you just, you really have to not use any more thrust than is absolutely necessary. That's been my problem so far. All right, seven. All right, there's like another challenge right here too. All right, stop. This is gonna be so hard to fly. Like, do you have any idea how hard a space battle would actually be to be able to aim at somebody who's also flailing through the air? All right, I'm actually gonna try this thing at the same time. I don't know. All right. Well, here goes something. Oh my goodness, this is not working. This is like a time thing, I'm pretty sure, but I'm, I, I kind of got it. All right, stop, 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 stop. All right, this way, that way, and that way, we're going towards it. All right, break. Good, this is good, this is good, this is good. Come on, come on. I, this is Star Wars, like the Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars TIE Fighters and stuff, I did it. The Star Wars TIE Fighters and stuff, they fly through space as if there was air resistance because they like curve around and stuff. But it's like, this is not, this is not how it works in real life. It's not that easy. Look at this. <laughs> this is me just trying to go. <laughs> All right, we're almost there. Uh, eight out of nine, one more left. And then there's the parking. But there's also another, there's a hidden star somewhere. I have no idea what the, where this star is for this challenge. All right, we're almost there. This is the last one. Yes. All right. So there's that. Now, where is this other star, though? Is it hidden somewhere in the spaceship, probably? Or is it like over somewhere else? I don't know how far I can even go. All right. I'm just going in this direction because there is another there's another satellite over here. I want to go towards this satellite and I'm actually going to try to like just fly for real. Look at this. I actually look like I have control. Wait, is that a real satellite? It doesn't seem to be getting any closer. There is an asteroid belt here. It's a real asteroid belt. I don't know if that satellite's part of the world. Oh, no. It does kind of look like it's getting closer now. This is so far away, though. Oh, I need a speedometer on this thing so I can see how fast I'm going. Because there's it's so difficult to have, like, a frame of reference in space for speed. You know what? Let's just do that right now while I'm here. Put our speedometer in here. Oh, no. I reset. I forgot that I reset on this map. Oh, wait. There's another satellite over here. That satellite seems even closer. That one seems even closer. Let's go to that one instead. And off we go. Let's see what kind of speeds we reach. Guys, I'm getting closer. This actually looks like it might be a real thing. I should probably start slowing down now, but I have no idea what, oh, oh, this is bad. I lost control. I've officially lost control. All right, and slow down, slow down. Slow down, please slow down. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm holding down the brakes. I'm holding the brakes. No. Oh. Am I still functional? Hold on. All right. Well, this is a real object. We've uh, we've confirmed that this is actually a real object. I don't know if we can go inside. There is something glowing down the bottom, I think. I don't know if we can go inside this. I don't know what these things are for. All right, I'm going to go up to the top of it, though. All right, well, unfortunately, there wasn't anything over here. There's an asteroid over there that has holes in it, and I kind of want to fly through those holes. So here, let's face over towards this asteroid. All right, here we are. We're flying through an asteroid now. Well, we're bouncing through an asteroid now. <laughs> all right, and we're back out on the other side. So it looks like all these asteroids floating around, they all have holes in them. But before I start getting too far away, maybe the star is just on this spaceship some somewhere. So let's explore more about this spaceship. Oh, ooh, I see something. I see something. I think it's like right above me here. Look at this. Look at this rotating. Oh, there's the star. Yes, I found it. We just got to get into this rotating cylinder of 
doom. Oh, no. Go, 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 go. Oh, I did it. I did it. I got all three stars on the map. Okay. Well, now I know that there's not a star on that asteroid really far away. I'm glad I didn't go towards there. So now I got to get to the parking. Uh-oh. <laughs> I got to get out of here first. Oh, no. I got caught on the outer layer. Oh, this is bad. I'm caught in between the layers of the thing. All right. I'm just going to have to go back to the spawn point. All right. There we go. Let's get over to the parking now. Look at this. Look at this awesome flying skill. I'm actually doing pretty good. It's not bad at all. All right. My braking definitely leaves some to be desired, though, because my braking just makes me spin all over the place as they try to, like, auto-correct me. So that's a little bit uncomfortable. I don't know how to deal with that. It's probably because I have everything hooked up at the same time, but I was hoping it would just stabilize myself, not necessarily like overdo it, you know? All right, come on, just get into the parking. There we go. All right, so that is what? Wait, what? Level locked. Why is this level locked, but number three is unlocked? That doesn't make any sense. All right, well, this challenge, for some reason, we have to collect cargo that escaped a faulty hatch. So we actually have to build... Oh my goodness, this is getting so complicated. We have to build a spacecraft that can not only navigate, but can grab stuff. You know what? Just putting a suction cup on this thing could probably do that. That might not be too bad. All right, so I've hopped over into sandbox mode real quick because there's one last thing we got to do to make this spaceship a legitimate spaceship. And that is, of course, we got to add some lasers to this thing. All right, so I've done it. I've added some lasers to the front right here. And I've also just added some a little bit more aesthetics. I've made this cool spiral thing on the front of these instead of these as being flat panels. And I also put a camera for first person right in the cockpit uh, view here. So let's check all this new stuff out. So, all right, here we go. We got our lasers installed up on the nose here, as you can see. I think I put them, I situated like them into the body a little bit. So they're just sticking out the sides. And I think that actually makes them look pretty nice. And uh, as far as first person goes, this is, this is what first person looks like right here. You can see our lasers and everything. We got our charge in the bottom left hand corner. Here, let's go a little bit towards the sun. There we go. Now we got the sun up ahead of us. All right, and yeah, I think this thing looks pretty good for my first ever spaceship. I'm pretty hip proud of it. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. I will be doing other space challenges in future episodes, so make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss that. And if you want to see some more awesome main assembly content, then go ahead and check out the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.